Hi everyone! This time I have Audio-Technica antenna and power distribution system for wireless microphone receivers. Something is wrong with this unit. Upon powering up I see this power LED flickering and I think I sense some burn smell, so I don't want to demonstrate that. Let's go straight to repair. Just a brief look at the back of the unit. This is the power input, 12 volts, 2.5 amps max. This is the connector. And uh, here we have four power outputs, 12 volts up to 500 milliamps to power the receivers. And here we have two antenna inputs with four-way splitting and amplification for each. And the antennas can be mounted on the front with two jumper cables to these antenna inputs. Let's check the power supply. This thing is supposed to work up to 3 amps. This connector has only two pins populated, so I found uh, this uh, two pin connector. So let's connect to this electronic load and give it a go. Here we are, 12.35 with no load. Let's start with uh, 100 milliamps. No problem with that. Let's go higher. Half an amp. No problem. The voltage drops a bit. One amp. No problem. The voltage dropped a bit more. And that's fine because of the wires and contacts there. Uh, let's uh, increase straight to two amps. No problem. Some more voltage drop and three amps and some more voltage drop and I believe it's fine because of the contacts and wires. So I don't think there's any problem with the power supply. Here we are inside and look how empty this thing is. They are probably reusing a standard case. And indeed there is a burn mark right here and I think I even see why. Do you see this uh, small yellow tantalum cap? Looks like another one is here, but it looks burnt. So, seems like yet another case of a shorted tantalum cap. Probably an easy repair, but you never know. Here is a close-up. Hopefully you can see this uh, burnt tantalum cap right next to the connector. I took the whole back panel off. That was the easiest way. Just three screws and uh, three connectors. And I don't think I really need to take this further apart. I can work on the capacitor from here. And I hope this board needs just some cleaning. And taking this board off is not very easy. It is soldered directly to the power connectors, which are snap fitted into the back panel. So I hope I don't really need to take it off. So let's check the power rail. Here it is. And of course there is a short across it. The capacitor is removed using hot tweezers. That was quite easy. And sure enough, the short is gone. About 26 ohms across 12 volt rail. And uh, this capacitor must be identical. 10 microfarads, 16 volts. Let's see if I have a replacement. So I installed the replacement capacitor which is slightly larger, but still fits just fine. And of course the resistance is still about 26 ohms across the rail. And I cleaned this board and it looks fine. And the resistance here is uh, practically infinite. No problem. And uh, this fuse uh, might be a bit damaged. At least it is discolored a bit. But still looks okay, and I don't have a replacement, so I'll leave it alone for now. So let's give this thing a go. 
So I tried testing off camera unfortunately, so I didn't capture the moment something smoked. I believe it was that I see, must be a voltage regulator. Why would that happen? On the second thought, probably I should have been worried about 26 ohms. Perhaps it was too low? But anyway, we have another problem. Yes, the IC clearly died. So I removed the voltage regulator and now let's check the resistance on the 12 volt rail before the regulator. Quite high, about 6 megs. And after the regulator on the 5 volt rail about 845k. Looks promising. I found a similar voltage regulator but with a different pinout. This version has the heat sinking tab grounded so I soldered it to this massive ground point of one of the antenna inputs and uh, run a couple of wires for the input and the output. Should work just fine. Alright, let's turn this thing on. No smoke, that's progress. Let's check. We should have uh, 12 volts on this capacitor. And we do. And 5 volts on this capacitor. Perfect. Now we need to make sure that the RF amplifiers are working. Let's use this Agilent E7495B uh, base station test set. It is in the two port insertion loss mode right now. This uh, thing has the frequency range from 440 to 900 megahertz. So I configured the analyzer from 400 to 1 gig to cover that. And I normalized uh, with this coupler. So we see a straight line at 0 dB. Now we disconnect this and connect the output from the analyzer to antenna input, channel A, and the input to one of the channel A outputs, let's say the first one, and turn this thing on. I see the light. And what do we see? About 30 dB loss. So, unfortunately, I believe at least the channel A is dead. Let's uh, go to channel B. So we move the output to channel B antenna input and move the input of the analyzer to, let's say, the second output of the channel B. And what do we see? The same thing, about 30 dB loss. So, yeah, unfortunately, this thing is dead. So, I'm afraid that when the voltage regulator died, it killed these two amplifier chips. I found the datasheet. We have these UPC2711T, 3 GHz amplifiers. The gain is about 13 dB, typical. And here at the end, the marking is mentioned. C1G. And that's exactly what we have. Bought four pieces on AliExpress from China. Hopefully they are genuine. It turns out that I bought a slightly larger package. But it still should work, I suppose. Here I soldered one of the replacement chips. I aligned the middle ground pins. And the other pins don't quite match the pads on the board, but still overlap slightly. Not ideal, but should work. And now back to this Agilent Analyzer. Again, normalized like this. And we have a nice uh, flat line around zero. 
average is almost zero and this is from 400 megahertz to one gig which is slightly uh, wider than this thing should do so let's disconnect this and uh, connect channel A this is antenna input and uh, let's say we use this output the last one this thing is off so we have a huge loss now let's turn it on and wait until the analyzer settles and here we are average loss is uh, 2.25 I don't quite like this deep uh, looks like about 5 dB or so but uh, it's probably okay so this is a four-way splitter and the amplifier should restore the lost signal to about the same level we started with it doesn't have to be super precise still I would prefer this to be a, a bit flatter let's check channel B again one of the output ports and let's see this is a bit better average is uh, 159 and I don't see that deep so it looks a bit better so I think this thing is fixed thanks for watching bye